Um, let me introduce another idea here. Um, robots. Uh, what would it take to create a robot with a sense of self and with some, some sense of moral accountability? My students, uh, since I came up here today, my students are um, debating this question actually tomorrow. I didn't uh, know we had this question, but uh, this is a, a, a place where, think about Watson, who was in the news last week or last few weeks, right, for beating the two Jeopardy champions, or back to um, Deep Blue, who uh, beat Karpov or Kasparov. Um, one of the things that almost everyone will want to say about those systems, uh, those computer systems, is that there is nothing it is like to be them. Uh, uh, there's no thrill of victory or uh, agony of defeat. Uh, there's no depression. There's no angst. There's no excitement. Uh, there's nobody home. I mean, you might want to think it's, it may be is getting close to what it's like to be a very small infant, although I can't judge that, or what it's like to be at late stage Alzheimer's. Um, but in any case, it's really nobody is there. Uh, and I do think it's interesting that in such systems, we're really not prepared to talk about selfhood, um, uh, even though they do have memory. Notice, I mean, you, it's easy to program computer systems which have complete, as it were, autobiographical memory, but there's something that looks like about them not being conscious which keeps us away from saying that there's any real self and that they're accountable. Yeah, can I add on this? It'd be easier to get a robot to where you'd say it has a self than to get it to know that it has a self. You could get it to be an autonomous functioning entity in a system uh, where it can distinguish between what belongs to it and what belongs to others and has obligations that it fulfills. Get it to do that. Uh, how to make consciousness out of inanimate material, nobody's been able to figure that. So the, the self-awareness will be a much harder problem uh, than to have it, uh, that we would say it has a self by, based on all the other uh, uh, qualifications. And I think part of the solution would have to involve the emotions. So, I've come forth as a big fan of reason as I am, but I think without the spark of emotion, of feeling, you don't get morality off the ground. It's an insight from Adam Smith and many others. You have to have some degree of caring for it just all to matter. And I don't think you get a notion of self in any interesting sense that we're talking about, unless without some response to pain or pleasure, some goals, some emotions. So, and that's bad news, because nobody has the foggiest idea how to put that into a machine. Yeah. Okay, let me ask, let me put you all on the spot. Will scientists of the future create this robot with some emotional life, a sense of self, and by extension, uh, perhaps the ability for, uh, for moral reasoning? Um, <clears throat> on the one hand, because I'm, you know, what we call, a nat I'm a naturalist, I believe that what there is and all there is is natural stuff. Therefore, we are conscious beings that are made of natural stuff, so you might say, well, then it's, it's in principle possible that there could be uh, such beings uh, and that we're maybe just not smart enough yet or haven't figured it out. But even if you think about, um, it, may, it might have to be so much the right stuff that it would be really making biological beings uh, out of something else. I mean, I, can, I always use this analogy. Um, think about things that are sticky, like uh, scotch paper is sticky, um, uh, and uh, super glue is sticky, and Velcro is sticky. Uh, but you can't make water sticky. You just can't make sticky water. Um, I don't believe that that's possible. So when people talk about, oh, eventually out of silicon and plastic we can make a conscious uh, being, uh, it could just be like that, that there's no, there's no way to weave the water together. Well, I guess if you make ice, maybe you'd make sticky. But you get the idea. There are some, it's not that any old thing can be made into any old other thing. And uh, it may just be that it, um, it requires biological nature. I, I agree with Owen on both counts. Um, can physical things have um, consciousness and selves and emotions? Absolutely, we are such things. So it's at least in principle possible to create one if only by creating another human. Can you make this sort of thing out of metal or out of silicon? I have, I have no idea. Um, and I don't think anyone else does. All I'll add is, here's what I do think we will get very soon if we don't have it already. We will get people who cleverly create machines, robots or computers, that behave in such a way that is irresistible yeah. on the part of other people not to see them as having uh, uh, emotions and selves. Creating a robot dog that is so good at being a robot dog that if you were to, to try to dismantle it by pulling off its head, people would scream, stop. Um, <laughs> This doesn't mean a robot dog is any smarter or more feeling than my toaster, 
but they might be able to create one that, that will give you an irresistible impression that it is. And that will be a discovery that will, that will change the world in, in interesting and possibly disturbing ways. But it sounds like that robot dog, I mean, that, that robot dog wouldn't have a sense of self, right? I mean, uh, everyone else might see that's right. that that's right. robot that's right. sort yeah. of as a being, but uh, that's not what we're talking about, we'll right? We'll be able to fake it much, much yep. long before <laughs> doing the real thing. It, it's an interesting exercise, uh, think about free will and, and what sense would it take for a robot for us to say that it has free will in the, in the legal sense in which we ascribe it to other humans. And, and I think that calls it, a, a robot is a creation of humans. It's a tool made by us. It's an extension of our intellect. Whereas free will, it would have to at least be self-programming. It would have to be able to reevaluate its own programming on an ad hoc basis, size up the situation, and then change its, and, and there, you know, once the robot can do that, we might say it's three quarters of the way uh, to that. So I guess I would assume that you think we do, we humans have free will, right? Well, there is something that we have, and certainly we make legal judgments and social judgments, did the person act of his or her own free will? And there is, those are meaningful questions. So yes, in, in that sense. Now, free will has a lot of different meanings, and some of them I find outlandish, and some of them are, are, are very uh, plausible and likely. Uh, if it's just making choices, well, yes, I think we make choices. If it's the mm -hmm. immaterial soul intervening to move it, well, I can't. <laughs> well, Owen, you, you're the philosopher here. Do we have free will? Uh, we make choices and decisions, but we don't have free will. Um, and uh, <laughs> so this is, requires a whiteboard again and some notation. But uh, the basic idea, I think, is this. Uh, and there's, there's, there is pretty much agreement about, among philosophers about this. There's a conception of free will that goes like this, that when I act, I act in a way as if I'm a prime mover, myself unmoved. I'm sort of quoting a philosopher named Roger Chisholm. So what I do is caused by me, and no one or nothing causes me to do what I do. I think most of us, and I, I, I'm sure my uh, fellow, my colleagues up here believe, um, because the mental sciences study causation, I mean, psychologists, neuroscientists, neurobiologists are always looking about the causes. Just because we don't know the causes that make our preferences or desires what they are doesn't mean that those don't have antecedent causes. So this would start to but make free it look will as is if not the absence of antecedent no, causes. No, well, this is the this is the question about the way free will is defined historically. Said, yeah. There's a concept of free will which has to do with what I just said, namely that I start causal chains and no one or nothing starts them for me. And that one's not going to uh, work out. That's called the libertarian conception of free will. It's distinguished from political libertarianism. But it's, it's many people think it's the dominant view in the culture, uh, that there's room for a, something which acts, uh, leverages our lives, that itself isn't part of the causal fabric of the universe. And it is tied up with the traditional view of that part of the self, which is a supernatural thing. I mean, there, there's a tension that this conversation is, is, is exhibiting, and it's a tension which many of us struggle with, which is it, it seems if we're, only, we're stuck with two options, um, neither one of them being very good. One is to accept a traditional free will we do. It's separate from causation. And then you just got to believe in magic. It's not the brain that does yeah. it. It's a magic soul that is itself has weird powers that no one understands. It's just magic and forget about it. That doesn't seem very good. Another alternative is simply to deny bluntly that we make decisions, choices, and so on. We're just robots in a very unpleasant way. That doesn't seem very good either. So what we'd all like to be, I think, is a sort of happy compatible list, accepting the reality of the brain and physics, but also saying you make choices and free choices and everything. This is the view everybody wants to have. The problem is there may be a genuine incompatibility with the sort of free will we wish to have and what we know about how the world actually works.